Okay, welcome to chapter three, which is forecasting. So what happens is when companies need to look at uh, how to how much to produce, they need to forecast what is called the demand. For instance, you do the same thing. You want to uh, buy some milk for the next week and uh, you have some company coming and they have kids so you want to buy some extra milk so right now what you're doing is you're forecasting what you did was you've been using one gallon of milk every week for the past uh, so many months and now you have somebody coming in so you're going to say well i don't think i can survive with one gallon with all these people coming home so you want to buy two gallons of milk right so what you're actually doing is to forecast based on what you've been using before. That's exactly what companies do. They look at um, the sales of the past years or weeks or uh, days or you know quarters or months and then they forecast based on those numbers and that's what we are planning to do this uh, in this chapter. Okay so let's do this. We're going to see how forecasting is essential for supply chain planning. We are going to evaluate demands using quantitative forecasting models. So this chapter will have a lot of math in it. So play, please uh, pay attention to some of the things that we're going to talk about. I'm going to do as usual some examples and then I'm going to ask you to redo it uh, using an Excel sheet and then I'll give you some homework so that uh, you'll get pretty proficient in what we are trying to do. We're going to also apply certain qualitative techniques to forecast demand and um, actually look at what are the different collaborative techniques to forecast demand as well. Now, forecasting is vital. It's vital to every business organization simply because it is the basic fundamental thing for corporate planning and control. So if you forecast really well, your corporate um, finance and accounting departments can use it as a basis for budgeting, for cost control. Your marketing department will use it for, to make key decisions on how many to sell, how many products to sell, and how many sales engineers you need or sales people you need and also it it gives the production exactly what to do how many products to do so that they can go and make sure that they have enough people to do the manufacturing they have people the enough capacity we're going to talk about capacity in the next um, next class but enough capacity for making these products and also, you need to make decisions on purchasing, staffing, inventory, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, forecasting is absolutely an essential and most one of the most important parts of operations management. So, we're going to be talking about various techniques, but we're going to keep it very simple. We're not going to go into complicated techniques. There are actually in the real world, there are very, very complicated techniques. We're not going to even touch that. We're going to look at the fundamental, basic, simple techniques of forecasting. Um, when we talk about forecasting, we also talk about what is called decoupling points. Okay. So decoupling points, they happen when we have inventory in the supply chain and we have certain processes and these inventories and processes are independent when they are independent then the decoupling point occurs so let's let's take a retail store let's say like macy's or walmart the inventory at a retail store like walmart or macy's it separates what individual companies are doing, okay? They, what they might do basically is to decouple it really efficiently 
they might say, okay, I'm going to buy, let's say 500 TVs because I know I'm going to sell 500 TVs over four weeks. So I'm going to buy 500 TVs and store it. And then I'll put it on the, I'll put on the shelf just three or four of them at a time. So that's the way inventory is stored somewhere and it is shown somewhere so that the customers can see and then buy it. Okay. Forecast of demand at these decoupling points allow inventory to be set to the proper level. So decoupling points are absolutely essential in forecasting. There are different types of forecasting, qualitative, quantitative, and things like that. But then we're going to look at quantitative stuff. We're going to look at what is called time series analysis. So we're going to primarily focus on time series analysis. We're not going to look at causal relationships. We're not going to look at simulations because these are a little more complex in nature. And we're not going to see them in this, in this class maybe for the next uh, you know, graduate class maybe. But time series analysis is what we're trying to focus in this chapter, okay? Basically, what is time series analysis? We are going, time series analysis is very simple. We are going to use past data or past demand or past sales for future forecasting or future demand. So we're going to take the past data and then we're going to predict the future data. That is basically time series analysis. So for this, we need to have past data. Unless you have past data, you cannot predict future. <coughs> okay. The components of the demand, there are various components. The components are trend. That means you might have, let's say, over a period of time, it might be going up. Your product sales will be going up. So this is a trend, upward trend. So this is a trend that people can use to predict. So if I'm at this point, I'm selling, let's say, 10 products, maybe at this point, I'm going to sell 30 points or 30 products, okay? So that is the trend that we can think of. That is one thing. There are also cyclical elements. For instance, certain products, they will do well at one point of time and then they go down and then maybe they'll go up over a next point of time. So this is cyclical in nature. So we need to find where these are going up. And using that, we can predict the future. So that is way, that is how you can do cyclical. Autocorrelation basically is, you, you basically think that if you sell one product, product X, the other product Y can be sold sometime in, this, in a different way. For instance, let's say you sell 10 of these X, but if, the, if this product X is correlated to Y, then maybe Y will also will sell more than 10, maybe 12, 13, 14, depends, depending on how the correlation is, whether it's a positive correlation. If it is a negative correlation, this, this Y will be probably selling less than 10. So depending on the correlation, you can also find the future trend. Random variation basically is when you have certain products having demands, but at random. Say, for instance, this month you sold, let's say, 10 products. Next month you sold, let's say, 20 products. Next month you sold only 8 products. It is random. There is no significant correlation. There is no significant way of knowing whether how these are interrelated. So we don't know. And that is the random variation. The average demand for the period is 
if I take four months of demand and I take the average of that, that gives me the average demand. What we are actually interested in this right now for this chapter is the seasonal element. This is what we are going to focus. Of all the components that we talked about, this is the one that we are going to be focusing. What is the seasonal demand? So for instance, if you're selling snow blowers, those snow blowers are have a seasonal effect. They're being they're going to be sold only in the months of let's say November, December, January, February in Chicago. But if you're selling, let's say, lawn mowers in Chicago, you're going to be selling this on the months of maybe April, May, June, July, August, and September. That's it. So this is seasonal. So certain seasons, the lawn mowers are being sold. Certain seasons, the throw, snow throwers are being sold. So that is the seasonal element that we are talking about. So when you're going to forecast, you're going to be looking at what is the seasonal effect on these products. So we're going to be looking at the seasonal effects of a product and find out the future demands. And we're going to predict the future demands. That is basically what we're going to do in this chapter. Okay. So the components of demand, which is growth and seasonal, can be unified saying this is the seasonal effect and this is the trend effect. So the trend effect is a red colored line and the seasonal effect or, or the black line. So you can see that certain seasons, the product is sold heavily. Certain seasons, it is not being sold that heavily and so on and so forth. Whereas a trend basically has got, as long as it has got an upward trend, it is going to be sold in, a, in positively more and more and more over the years. So as the time increases, various years increases, your, your trend actually is going up. That means you're going to be selling more and more. But the seasonal effect remains the same, almost the same, in the sense that it is going to be sold only on certain months. That is the basic idea of growth and seasonal and trend as components of demand. Okay. The trend basically can be a linear trend, which is a linear line, straight line. It can be a S curve kind of a trend. It can be an asymptotic trend. It can be also even an exponential. Okay. And it can be very complex, can be non-linear also. something like this so it can be non-linear as well it can be squared function it can be um, a, a, a very varied multivariate function it can be anything so right now we are not going to be looking at the trends as such because we're going to be focusing only on season okay the time series analysis also, one thing that we need to know about that is there are short terms, medium terms, and long term. Short term typically is forecasting less than three months. Medium term is about three months to two years, whereas long term is greater than two years. If you're going to forecast something for greater than two years, you're talking about long term time series analysis. So we're going to choose a model. The model is based on the time horizon to forecast, which is basically this short term or medium term or long term. We are going to look at whether we have data available or not. We are going to look at how much accuracy is needed and what is your budget. If your budget is um, endless, then you can go and buy the best software that you can forecast. And that will be very costly, but you can buy it and you can forecast it really, really well, depending on the forecast of the, on your budget. And also many a time companies face that they are not, they don't have qualified personnel. So students like you who are learning this, who are an asset to companies when they are going to predict something or forecast, forecast something. Other 
items, other factors can be flexibility, how fast a company can 